OK, so moving on to the next stage of weathering. And for this, I'm going to be doing a bit of uh, oil weathering to the uh, airframe. And just by way of a tiny bit of contrast, I don't know whether you can see that already. I've just had a little bit of a play here underneath the right, the left wing, um, and I've not I've yet to do anything on, on the underside of the right wing. Um, at the moment, it, th there's not much difference, but there's a bit of difference. If I just bring that in, in a little bit closer, just have a look at difference between some of the panel lines here and the panel lines over on this side. Um, now, this is a technique that works really well with recessed panel lines, which is what we're going to be uh, looking at here. And it's just about adding uh, some kind of wash to these panel lines to uh, actually to accentuate them, to enhance them, to make them stand out a little bit. And that means that we have an opportunity to blend in things like the markings uh, so that they seem much more uh, painted on. And so we've got to try and include the markings as part of this process. Um, because uh, I think it's useful to have quite a subtle um, effect and because that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for going completely mad. In fact, use, looking at any kind of pictures I could find, uh, I just found it astonishing, one, difficult to find pictures of the underside of Hawker Hurricanes, certainly operational ones, which is what I'm looking for, um, to see how they did weather. And the best ones that I could find seemed to show that actually, probably unlike the Spitfire, they, particularly these ones that had the tropical filter, they were slightly less um, oil stained um, with hydraulic fluid and all the rest of it that, that you get on the underside of operational fighters uh, than say the Spitfires were. Uh, so those pictures that I have seen certainly show certainly some grime coming back from the wheel bays, which is what you'd expect. So we're going to give much more treatment around these, um, um, these central areas here that are aft of the wheel bay. And so the idea here is to just add some streaking, uh, some panel line um, enhancement on the underside, and we'll do a bit of extra work around the underside here just to kind of accentuate that and provide a bit of contrast. Um, so to this point, we've only been using acrylic paints, which is great, because that means that they're the perfect base on which to then use oils for your washes. So you might use any number of the products, some from the Humboldt range, they've got some washes, um, or you might choose to use um, other washes, um, oil-based washes from some of the other manufacturers. Or as you could do, as we're gonna do now, uh, do a bit of a DIY job, do, it, do a bit of a DIY yourself. Um, and for that, all you need is, 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 is minimal really. Just pop along to your local craft shop or your artist shop, supply shop, and just buy uh, not as big a tube as this. This was the only one I could find years and years and years and years ago of uh, oil paint. Uh, you can get much smaller tubes that will last forever. And uh, it's useful to just pick a, a, a range of, of uh, tones that you think are gonna be useful for the weathering that you're thinking of doing. So I think on blue, like this, grey works really well, which is why I'm actually going to use Payne's Grey on this occasion. So all I've done here is, 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 is get the oil tube ready and we need some oil thinners. And this low odour thinners that I picked up from the uh, uh, hobby uh, shop at the same time was exactly the same. Um, uh, so it's exactly the product we need to thin oil paint and it's a low odour thinners, but just check that it's for oil colour and not acrylic. Or water based, so it's oil that you're looking for here. Um, low, odor's low odor is good because obviously it's less stink and smell and all the rest of it, but in any event, it's useful to try and do this in a well ventilated area, it's going to be helpful. Um, so, what are we going to need apart from that? Well, I have a little palette like this, this cost me peanuts from one of those um, art shops uh, that I've already mixed up some grey and, and some thinner, but uh, it's, it's oil thinner, but I'll show you those in just a moment. Um, some little these little buds that you get these little cotton buds they are uh, sort of essential stroke ideal for removing the excess later on and then I've got a number of different brushes mostly flat brush but not exclusively uh, flat uh, brushes here that I'm going to use to apply some of the oil and create some of the oil effects so it's just about um, having a few of these to, to hand so that you've got the right sort of shape when you need it um, okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. So this is very, very simple. All we need to do is just take a little bit of oil from the tube. Now, what you sometimes find is that the oil kind of separates inside. So some of the pigment goes inside. So all I do is just take the back of an oil brush, stab it inside a few times. That mixes up the oil at the top. You only need a very small amount, really. Hardly any, really. Just a little bit there, as you can see on the, uh, the brush. So 
I've just mixed up a new section here so you can just see how, how we do it. So just scrape that off into the bottom. So I think it's useful to just mix some and then if you really do need some more later, you can just mix that up, uh, uh, mix up a bit more if you need it. But there's no point in going mad with loads and loads of uh, oil. It's just wasteful really. So we can just get rid of the um, oil paint and then we just get some thinner. You could use a pipette for this. Um, personally, uh, all I'm going to do is use a, a thicker brush uh, and just pop that into the bottom here. And without dumping that into the oil paint, just going to make transfer some of it steadily into the palette. It's just a little way of controlling it there. And then when you're ready, all you need to do, hopefully you can just see that, is just start to gently mix up some along the edge. Now for me, I don't kind of go headlong into the whole lot. Just I just want to mix, you know, some of this here and leave some of the more concentrated stuff at the, the, the deep end as it were and at the shallow end of, of this just, just get some mixed up. And as you can see that's all really uh, smoothly and easily mixed in. It's got a very fine pigment this which is why this all works so well. Some of the washes I've noticed have got quite heavy pigment, it's not particularly uh, fine and then you tend to get that grainy effect and some of you might have experienced that before I certainly have such so which is why I've settled on a decent make of oil paint get a get a tube as I've said and then a decent lowered and thinners and you can just mix it up uh, like so um, so that's the main uh, reservoir there and then all literally all I've done in in this central one here is I've just decanted some of the lowered and thinners straight into that so that this almost becomes our blending palette I call this um, because that's what we're going to be doing is dipping it in, into here if we want to thin out the mix at any point which we probably will do and then blend it in uh, appropriately particularly when we do some of the staining on the underside here uh, after the, the, the gear bay. Um, okay so we're pretty much ready to go now it's, it's sort of as simple as that in terms of prep. Um, these old oil paints will just stay kind of wet in effect or stay well not set for a long time. You can add um, uh, an element here, this is called liquid stuff, is um, it speeds up the drying time. So if you want to speed up the drying time, just add a drop or two of that into your mix, or probably just a drop in, in a, such small amounts like this. But I'm not too fussed about that because I quite like the extra drying time that you get with oils. And that's one of the big advantages with using oil washes over acrylic ones is you get lots of time to work um, with the, uh, the oil uh, paint on the surface. If you don't like something, you can usually remove it quite easily. So my suggestion here is that what I do is just try and uh, do a, a bit of weathering around here using a bit of a wall wash, as we said, and we can go from there. So pointy brush this time, I'm gonna use one of those. So um, straight into our mix we've just done here. And for me, I, I just want, I want it dark, but not, not too dark, so. That's great. So this kind of liberal, it's plenty on there. And the whole idea is we're going to rely on something called capillary action, which you might well be familiar with, to get it to move around the panel line. So all we do here, if I can try and bring that in, is just jot that usually in an angle like this, and you can just see it moving around the detail there. You can see it's um, it's very easy to do. It's not not a complicated uh, technique at all. This it's quite nice to get it around those little raised rivets.
these little hinges here for the flaps. See that capillary action working really well. So it works quite well on the silver areas, the aluminium areas, I think. You see what's happening is, in effect, it's just kind of breaking it all up. So it's not all uniform and clean and all the rest of it. Remember we were talking about earlier about this theatre of operations. Well, these things certainly did get grubby. So I want something that's going to... Okay, um, so you get the idea. It just is a case of just being patient, uh, working your way around the airframe. Until you kind of get the kind of effect that, that you're after. Now what's quite useful here is that there, hasn't, there isn't really much to clean up. Um, and the trick really is to just wait probably a bit of time. Certainly I would wait um, normally an hour or two um, if I can be patient enough and it really is useful to try and be patient here uh, before you clear up any of the the, the excess so like for instance um, actually it's, it's been quite clear at clean actually but if I just create create a bit of excess just to show how so imagine you were a bit clumsy here and you'd you'd put here we are you'd, you'd got some extra over the, uh, the side of your uh, panel line you obviously you want to get rid of that it looks looks daft like that take one of your your cotton buds just pop it in the edge of your um thinner oil thinner get rid of virtually all the excess onto a tissue which is all we've done there rub that onto a tissue and now you've got a, just a slightly ever so slightly damp cotton bud and then working against the uh, at, at right angles to the panel line is what i'm trying to spit out there all you do is try to wipe that back again in the direction of the airflow. Now it's quite useful, I think, sometimes to have a bit of that left. Um, there we go. That's got rid of pretty much most of it. If you want it all off, then just, just get rid of it. And it's easy to clean up, as you can see. But even just by doing that, what's quite nice is you just get some general kind of grubbiness anyway. And you can use that as, as a technique to just make areas a bit more grubby than they might otherwise be. Or you might, yeah, just, just as you want really, simple as that. Again, just from those little hinges here, 
just tiny little back with your cotton bud and you can create a little bit of um, staining there. If you want a little bit more staining just pick a really fine brush into the wash again put those touch those in here again like that and you can um, even just try with your brush you can just try to come back I think it's quite, it can be quite heavy doing that. It's a bit, a little bit clumsy to me. So we just take our cotton bud again, and just very lightly. Let's go over the top like that. And what you end up with is a much more subtle effect. I don't know whether you can see that so well on the video. Hopefully you can, but just very, very subtle staining coming back from I mean you can imagine that you know these flaps are working they've, they're oiled in the hinges which you can see the hinges here it's reasonable that you get some um, oil streaking or hydraulic fluid uh, streaking back from there um, other little things you've probably noticed here is that we've got the gun ports ejector chutes uh, here um, I'm going to actually paint those black in the middle and all I've done is just touched in a bit of the wash here just to provide a little bit of kind of shadowing inside, but actually that they, those would they would look black, and so I will paint them black inside. But just for the time being, I'm just going to stick a bit of a wash in there, and that's quite useful. Again, if you want to create a little bit of staining back from there, because sometimes you'd get the heat staining back. Again, it's probably useful just to, to give this a bit longer than I have here. I'm just rushing this a little bit just to kind of show you, just just back like this and then you get the subtlest of staining um, if you want more then just um, up for me it would be fine tuning with pastels later I think that gives you more control and gives you more of an effect so we'll use some pastels later on just to create a little bit more staining there um, but what I'm going to do is just a little bit more heavy staining around the center here because I just think that's that's quite useful I think to to, to show you that so back into our wash what I'm gonna do is just try and put some here along the edge the trailing edge of the the gear bay because you do get quite a bit more staining here so I'm coming in quite heavy now heavier wash along the front edge and some of these details here then all you do is just with, with either a dry brush uh, a broad one you can just gently kind of begin to play with that and just see if we can get a bit of more slightly heavier darker staining and streaking from that Be really don't, don't don't do much at all really so already can you see that what you've got is already some staining that's coming back um, and it looks a bit heavier already um, now you can just keep going really until you think that's that's enough um, so for me I'll I'll do I'm gonna I'm going to do a little bit more um, and of course it's useful also to add some of this wash inside the gear bay there at the same time there's lots of detail we can just touch in with our our uh, brush and, and get some weathering going on in there, on in there. Um, and that's um, that really is about it so that's um, that's a panel line wash using oil paints and you can do as much or, or little of that as you want but I do think it's better than nothing because with nothing it all just is a bit too um, it's just a bit too stark a bit two dimensional and just cleaning up here over that marking here that panel line Sort of rolling into it, wiping in towards the, the center of it. And then down a bit to get rid of any excess. But what we've got there is then a decent wash straight through the marking. 
just adds a bit more realism to, for, for, for my money and makes that marking look a little bit more sprayed on uh, as if it would have been done in in, uh, in in the real world. Okay, there we are. So basically have fun uh, and that's oil washing. Okay, so here's a little look at the undersides after we finished doing the oil um, weathering, uh, the streaking with the oil wash. And I, I think it's come out really well. That's just a nice kind of grubby, dirty kind of finish that I, I was looking for. So it's interesting just to notice there that, you know, the wash goes through the markings uh, and, and so on. So um, also a bit of uh, grubbiness in the wheel bay itself. Just just enough. I don't go too mad in there. You're not going to see that unless you lift the model up. So overall, that's that's a good kind of finish, I think, for the moment. So what I'm going to do now is just leave that overnight and then tomorrow we'll apply some matte varnish, put the Humbrol acrylic matte varnish over the whole thing. And I'll just apply that um, more heavily to the flat exposed areas. But on the underside like this, I'm going to leave that more satin like, like you can see it now, because I think that's more realistic of the kind of um, hydraulic stain that you're likely to get uh, with this kind of um operational theater on the hurricane so yeah happy with that pleased with it so far and uh, uh come back and we'll uh, have a look at the uh, matte varnishing now i don't know if you've seen one of these before but this is a liquid chrome pen from a company called Molito. i just bought these uh in an art shop i think it was if i recall and um, they have different uh, size nibs as you can see here and they are just brilliant for doing small detail work that you need to be high chrome so things like oleo legs um, and in this case um, I've got the backs of the lights the wing leading edge lights for the hurricane and all you need to do is literally just paint in the back just takes a moment for the chrome to start flowing like that So I imagine these would be good for car headlamps, um, the reflectors on the back of those, that kind of thing. Okay, so the, I mean that's about it. I mean, you get the idea. You can see there. I mean they are just incredibly shiny, which is brilliant. They don't take too long to dry either. So I'll just leave those for um, half an hour or so. And then we can um, we can insert them into the leading edges of the wing, and then close those um, those recesses up. Okay, so let's look at where we're at uh, at this stage. So all the matte varnish is on, and um, I've just begun to add some of the smaller details like. The leading edge lights they're on now the good thing about this Hawk Hurricane certainly this new tool Hawk Hurricane is that the clear parts fit really well so there's no issue about adding those at this stage just in case any of you were wondering about that um, so those have gone in the wingtip lights the I don't know whether you can see that but what I have done is literally I've just the Hurricane um, wingtip lights have colored bulbs not colored um, glass um, surrounds so all I did with a little pin vice drill is just drill a little hole in the back of the clear part, drop in a bit of clear red to me a clear red, and then add the clear part using some um, gator glue, which is just like a kind of a white PVA glue. You can use micro crystal clear, something like that, or even just, just straight PVA, just stick these in. They'll just attach very well with that. Um, so those are in, so you've got uh, red on the uh, port wing and then uh, starboard over here 
you've got the little green bulb just inside there, if you can see that. A um, couple of other things I've done is I've also just begun to do some of the next stage of weathering. Now we've got the matte coat of one. I'm really pleased, actually, really pleased with that um, Humbrol um, flat uh, or matte clear uh, varnish. It's really, really good. It goes on really quickly, really excellent self-leveling, um, dries very quickly. So, yeah, not much to dislike about that at all. Um, so uh, let's just have a little look at these gun ports then. So sort of options really, I suppose, if I just try and show you this. So what I've done is I've actually begun to just weather this, this set over here on the right wing. And I don't know about you, if you can just pick that up in, in the light, I know it's probably a bit bright, it's a bit hard to get the lighting always right for these fine details, but there's just some very subtle weathering around the ports here. And I haven't done any here on the other wing and just notice the difference. So you remember we drilled out the holes for the gun ports. Well, that's that's as they are here. And here we've just added uh, a little bit of weathering to those. And I think it makes a world of difference to do this so we don't leave them like that. Equally, I think for me, I think one of the things I hate about a lot, a lot of models sometimes that about you is when you go, you see them just this streaking seems a bit excessive uh, with the... Um, um sort of uh the residue really i suppose from the uh, machine guns being fired okay you, you do get some sometimes you get nothing at all but I, I rarely see massive great streaks down the wings i think that kills the model so subtlety again is is the watchword i think i think for me by a mile here so the way i do it is is this so all i do is i get an ordinary graphite pencil like the one we we, we used earlier and you just literally if i just get this right so you can see it in the middle hopefully it's getting into focus now so if you just literally put the pencil ordinary graphite pencil there's nothing uh special at all straight hb pencil work that in oops into the holes what that's doing apart from giving a really nice very subtle metallic look to um, the aperture is depositing some of the graphite into the hole. And then just using a really small cut down brush, which you can see here, um, all I do with that is I just sort of work it ever so slightly, work it back. And it picks up a bit of that graphite. It just begins some very subtle staining back. All you need to do is just keep going until you think, no, that's it, I've got enough of what I'm looking for there. And for me, I don't, I just don't, I haven't seen on Hurricanes massive staining back from these gun ports. So for me, I think it's good to add a bit, but not much. There you go, begin to just see that. It's, I mean, it's, it's subtle, but it's a good deal better than it, than it was. Um, and then underneath, if you can just see that, just work it back. down under the leading edge of the wing. This is a good deal easier when you're not sort of contorted to get <laughs> to a position where you can see what's happening. Okay, I don't know. It's, it is subtle, I, I grant you that. But hopefully you, you can, you can, you can see it. And if you want, as I say, if you want a bit more, then all you do is add a bit more graphite to the aperture. And then literally just, just come down and it'll pick that up from the hole and give you just enough to give a really nice subtle, yeah. Cool, that's about what I was after there. So I'm really pleased with that. That's just enough. It's subtle. It's there. And how much better now do these gun ports look than just the recessed um, shallow apertures that we had molded uh, into the kit, which is perfectly fine. I understand that um, from a manufacturing point of view. But obviously now what we want is we definitely want these to um, to be a bit of a feature of the model. 
So there we go, that's the gun ports done. And then we can move on to some of the other um, bit, bits of weathering. And for that, I've got two more things. Well, we've, we've got our sturdy uh, pencil again, ordinary graphite pencil, that's really good. Now this is great for just some of this subtle chipping. So if, I just try and get this into the camera so you can see it. Um, so this is for just, for me, little, little scuffs, scratches, just here, like you've got a big area of that midstone. I just think it's better. It'll look better if we just add a few little scratches to that. Probably along the, the, the edges here, where gun crew would have been getting in and out of the gun ports. A bit, a bit back here. Try to be as random as you can with that. And it's, I think you've got to be really careful you don't overcook this. But just gives you an idea, and I don't really think you can see that. I hope you can see that. Just some subtle scuffs, and notice how much darker they are than the original um, chipping that we did with the with the um, hairspray technique here. Really pleased with how that that came out. Although I did notice some of it disappeared, of course, under our um, non-slip tread um, decal that went on earlier. And I think again, that's something that I've no idea whether that was. Uh, I imagine it was some sort of composite kind of um, rubberized material, I'm not sure, but I can't imagine that that didn't uh, wear a bit as well. So that's also useful to just perhaps add a few little tiny little scuffs, not mad, but just, just a few little scuffs around the edge here. Might just be anti-slip back black paint, which I'm sure would have come off as well. Imagine a constant in and out of the aircraft you would have got. A bit more down down here where the pilot would have climbed on board You've got the sort of various sort of handholds and things here that we, we we weathered earlier on remember we chipped those and I think again this is a really good place to add some sort of scuffing around here Just general kind of wear and tear. Now you may have noticed that just along the sill, the canopy sill here, which is, is along here, you know, you've got the canopy sliding up and down. You know, this is an area that would be brighter because I guess the, um, the metal would have worn more readily. And for that, you could use one of these silver pencils. So this one is, uh, it's made in Germany. It's by uh, Faber-Castell. And it's just a silver pencil. You can get them in any of these hobby shops. Um, so you can just use this along, along here. And it leaves a much brighter um, effect. So, you know, again, you don't want to go mad with that. Um, but for me, um, that's just a good way of adding a little bit of fresh chipping then if you want anything a little bit a little bit brighter You can just put some fresh scratches on there just along that edge Maybe you see that. Um, Again probably the other side as well you've got the access door here um, So I don't think it's unreasonable that you're going to have got some brighter chipping around there Again, let's get that sill done. Just along the edge. Got these little catches things here. So just, just subtle really. Hopefully that's showing up. But for me, you know, I don't wanna go mad. It's 48 scale, don't wanna to go too, to OTT, so we'll leave that um, there for that. And then again, just a little bit more, perhaps around around the wing route here, with our pencil, back with our pencil again. But it does give a really nice subtle finish. And simple reality is, is that the longer you go on, the more graphite you deposit, the kind of shinier it gets. So you've got lots of control here, 
which is what I like about this particular technique. Lots of control. And again, I think there'd be more at the wing route here when the crews are getting on board. So I'm gonna just do a bit more here, a bit fresher stuff here, a bit more heavily. Imagine all that sand getting kicked up off the uh, desert floor. City Barani, yeah, I reckon this is going to be pretty, pretty chipped. But it's a good way of tying in that uh, anti-slip panel there as well, isn't it? I think so. There we go. Just got an idea there. And again, you can go on. So I mean, I'll, I'll probably leave it at that point. I mean, you you get the idea. And you can go on and do some of these fasteners around here for the the engine cowls. Um, so I'll do a few of those. And then to be honest with you, I, I'm not going to do a huge amount more. Um, perhaps just one thing to bear in mind, uh, it could be really useful to um, to do some something with the roundels. Um, you can't have the roundels completely unweathered. And again, you know, just the, um, the pencil is a really good way of just adding a few little scuffs, a few little, a few little scuffs and chips to that paintwork. And you get the idea just hopefully you can just pick up those and the idea for me is that when you look at the model you just they just catch the light every now and again uh, and you start to think oh yeah good that, that looks metallic well, at least I do um, hopefully you agree um, so there we go you can just do as I said do as more more or as most or as little or as much as you like um, and um, you know there you go but that's uh, that's, uh, that's some of the final chipping really. And then we're really nearly onto the home run, which is to get the final assembly. So things like the undercarriage will go on, you get the aerial mast will go on. Um, and honestly, the top it out ceremony will be to put on the nice uh, spinner, that red spinner. Um, and that'll be my final last task. It's one of those things that I just love to do right at the end of the build. And that's like the very final thing to, to do. So there we go, we've got a Hawk Hurricane coming on it's it's well on the way now and hopefully you like it uh, um, and I must say I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's come on so far. Okay so we're moving on now to some of the final weathering and the, the thing I want to, to show you now is the exhaust staining and how you might do that. There really are lots of different ways that you could um, tackle this and the first part of the process for me is to just have a look at some pictures any photographs you can find i mean these are from this excellent uh, reference the error detail series um of books i don't know whether you've seen seen these anywhere but these uh, this is error detail 12 on the hawker hurricane and um, there's a whole bunch of them i got them from japan you can get them from japan um but they're quite difficult to, to get hold of now but if you get them great or look at any other references you can find on the net or otherwise um, and what you do notice I, I think is this very characteristic pattern to Hawker Hurricane uh, exhaust staining um, from this third stack here at the back it seems to definitely have a kind of a, a, an arc sort of banana shape to it going up and then down um, again looking at some of those other pictures you can probably see there again the aircraft at the back you can just see that that same pattern and again even on this one on the right hand side here again you can see a similar sort of pattern get all sorts of varying degrees of uh, residue and it's really up to you of course as ever as to decide how much of that to apply I do think it's worth adding something I, I think it just would spoil the model to have no exhaust staining at all uh, especially one 
um, that we have been working, especially a subject like we've been working on here, where you know, we're talking about an operational machine. They're not really going to have been spending too much time, I imagine, uh, with ground crews cleaning up exhaust residue in the desert and near the field of operations. So that's certainly not something that I would uh, uh, expect to see. So so plenty, um, I think, well, let's just start building it up and let's see how we go. So having looked at the pattern, then that sometimes dictates the kind of method I might use. Uh, and also the scale, and I think on these smaller scales, like this 48th scale hurricane, I think it's better to go the, or easier to go the pastel route. It should be relatively quick. Um, it's something that you should just definitely build up. Um, it's not about slopping it on, you know, pastels don't really come off that easily, uh, especially on this matte finish we've now got. So for me, it's just about subtly building it up and trying to create the kind of a effect of a pattern that you're looking for. Uh, and as I said, I'm not gonna go mad, but I do want there to be some staining there. So some of the tools, classic old tools, back to my um, bristle um, brushes here. These are my cut down ones that I use for, for weathering and, and pastelling. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of others as well that, that are different shapes. And notice some of these are really cut down. Some have got bristles, um, just, just, just a few left. Some of these are really, really short. And all of these have got kind of different, um, but they provide you with different options uh, depending on the kind of effect you want to create and some of the the bigger ones are, are enable a bit more blending to go on um so i think what we need to do is firstly then decide okay well if it is pastel then what color pastel so i particularly like this set i've got here which is um from inscribe i bought these for i think from again from hobbycraft store here in the uk years ago um and i'm sure you can get them pretty much anywhere but all they are that if are, are just these all base pastel pe um, pastels and they come in these sticks and all you do is um, take some of the pastel chalk that you want on the end of one of your uh, your chosen brushes and for me it's going to be definitely kind of darker to start with and we might then add a few other um, browns and, and, and other tones later on but we'll come to that uh, when we get there so we'll just begin to start the process and we'll sort of see how we go so as we said we're definitely looking at trying to kind of come up a little bit at the back and it's just going to be about taking time to do this so for me it's about kind of broadly getting this pattern right to the where do i want it and then we can start doing a bit of um blending and adding all sorts of other weird and wonderful bits in later on. Kind of, kind of gentle, kind of stabbing motion is not a bad way to go really. Broadly kind of ending up down here somewhere, I think. She's one of the other brushes now, I think, just to try and do a little bit of blending in here. Just, just making that less, less, hard, less hard edges on those little, little spots. And that's the kind of the first sort of phase. We'll come back, we'll do a bit more now. Just pick... Uh, yeah, I think the same brush is good for this. I'm going to pick the next brown down. So rather than it be the very, very darkest one, going for the next one. Try and pick up some of those gaps from the first uh, effort. But it is cumulative. This is all about taking your time. Some of the darker again, near, particularly near the front edge. Okay. So 
it's always worth taking your time and, and again using our blending brush just try and take out some of any kind of the hard hard bits there. Trying to follow that line down with, with the brush all the time so that you get a fader or more faint the further back you go. Okay. So, I mean, to be honest, you know, I, I, I like that. I think that's given quite a nice effect already. It's not quite, um, quite what I want um, in terms of the finished article, but you certainly get the idea. Yeah, hopefully you can get the idea. Just check that out. Hopefully you see that all right in the light. Um, and what I do notice with a lot of these exhaust stains is that quite often, again, I'm just going to pick up on the sort of next to darkest brown, is you quite often find that it gets or goes up up the seam lines sometimes get this all sort of like it's like streaking streaking is probably too strong a word for it but just seem to get this kind of residue that creeps down the panel line and up it a bit. So that's what's a uh, little bit of uh, residue dro dropping down there from the rivets and so on. Now that's quite, um, I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's looking quite good. Um, close to what I was kind of after. You may notice that sometimes, and I've noticed this variable, uh, variably on different Hurricane aircraft, that sometimes you get um, quite a bit of light stain, you get, almost get like a lighter grey. Um, now, that's not far off the effect that I want at the moment with this, but if you do want uh, to add um, a lighter area, I mean, you just got to pick the kind of colour you want here. I mean, I'm going for like the, the, the faintest yellow, which is almost white, and if you want, or, or you can pick one of the greys and you can just add a bit of lightening. In fact, I will swap to a light grey, I think. And all I've got is a similar, same manufacturer, different options here from, from almost black right the way down to white. So try and pick one of the lighter greys there. You do want to add just a bit of light. You tend to get it more or less just, well, you get all sorts of variations, don't you really? But you just decide where you want it using your photographs as reference. Um, back to our blending brush again. And there you go, you've just got a little bit of lighter um, residue just behind the exhaust stack. And that pretty much, I think it will be about it for me in terms of exhaust staining for, for this side. I don't want to go on much beyond that. I think that that's the kind of look I was after. I don't want to kind of destroy the whole kind of effect that are going on here. So I'll do the same on the other side. Um, yeah, and then uh, we can insert our exhaust stacks into the side here. Um, and add some of the other accessories and we'll be pretty much there. So there we go. That's just one way of doing exhaust staining. I hope you like it. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you, you've got other options. If you wanted to spray it, you could spray it, but it's a bit of a kind of one hit wonder there. You get one shot at, if you want to spray it. My only tip if you're going to go that route would be to have really well thin paint. The nozzle turn right down on your airbrush. It's not something you can hand paint, I don't think. You, I think it's got to be pastels or, or airbrushing, really. Um, and then, um, yeah, just just see how 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 it, how it how it looks. But for me, I quite like this in 48. I think you've got lots of control, and you just build up the effect um, that that you want. So another task we need to have a look at is weathering the wheels on the tyres specifically. Um, so given the theatre of operations, again, uh, these are going to be quite uh, dusty, I, I think, I feel. 
and so basically it's it's pastels for me definitely um i know you can use different pigments for this and for sure get, get, give it a go but for me it's just a, a a really quick way of trying to achieve um a sensible um finish so some brown pastel first of all one of my small little brushes and we, what I'm trying to do is demonstrate, show how you can get some of this accumulation around the wheel hub on the in, inner kind of side. So don't worry if it goes all over the, uh, the the metal hub itself. That's not 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 a problem. I'll deal with that in a bit. So this is just trying to. As you can see here, just trying to get some contrast with the grey and I'm sure you get this dust accumulating around and kind of on and in and around the uh, the hub itself. Um, get our blending brush again just try and take some of that off the main hub itself And then just begin to just subtly blend that into the tire. So just notice that we used rubber. Um, I think I, gosh, was it? I think it was actually to me a rubber black I used for the tire. Um, I just love the colour. I think it's a really really good um, rubber looking uh, colour. Really. Um, and as you can see here, I, th I think that looks that looks pretty good already. To be honest, um, a way of just trying to help some of the. Uh, some of the main tire sort of come out a little bit and get look get that looking a bit faded is a bit bit of the gray one of the lighter grays just just touch this in just touch this in around the main tire and this is just lightening the whole thing up can imagine you know again in these sort of deserty regions I would imagine definitely rubber tires certainly look quite light and that's all we're doing there is just lightening up the main tire itself just with some of this pastel chalk all the time we're just gently blending it in and so on so look if you want a really quick way of making a tire look realistic i don't know about you but I, I, I love that i think that's that's spot on for me gives a really nice dusty look to the um to the whole unit and now what we can do is carefully well obviously i'll do the other side and then we'll carefully stick that onto the um, axle um, and then you can always touch up a little bit if you need to but essentially you're trying to keep your fingers off the main hub area and, and the dusting in the center just hold it by by the the edges here these are the easiest bits to touch up pop it onto the axle make sure it's all sitting at the right angle because the wheels and tires on the hurricane certainly have a, a an interesting angle to them they're slightly canted uh, inwards at the top of the tire so they have this kind of slightly um sort of Odd offset look to them so you just need to keep an eye on that one so your tires don't sit vertical because they don't sit vertical on the real thing but we'll get on to that when we fin do the finishing touches so I hope you like that that's uh, that's one of the main tires and we'll come back finish off the others and um, we really are on to the uh, the final stages now so as you can see we're we're getting there the undercarriage is now on Really impressed with the design of that and the way FX have tackled it. All the parts fit perfectly and you even get a shaped axle so that the tyres will go on. They are handed so make sure you get them on the right side. Um, and in fact the, the fit's very good so they didn't in fact even need gluing. And, and then they sit at this characteristic slightly canted out at the, uh, at the bottom or in at the top uh, depending how you look at it. Um, so you can see you've got you've got those naturally set at the right angle so one of the final uh, weathering tasks now is to i think add some dusting to the side of the lower uh, portion of the fuse, fuselage and again just take one of our definitely a pastel job for me this but of course you could obviously use 
uh, an airbrush if you fancied. So I'm just taking a, one of the sort of yellowier sandy sandy colours to start with. And all we do is just, for me, is just gently build this up now around the side of the fuselage. Exactly the same as we did with the exhaust. So the main thing is to apply the pastels first of all, and then you can do a bit of blending in a moment. Add a little bit of that um, sort of slightly more orangey colour we apply to the tyres to get a bit of consistency here. And again, consistent with the airfield um, type of your decision on the airfield um, ground as well, groundwork. So it's all pretty consistent. I think that's the, the idea, really. Again, one of the things I like about this is that it is it is pretty quick. If you if you don't, you know, it's a bit of a practiced hand. I get that, but you know, it definitely will work quite nicely. A little bit more aft of the tail wheel there, where that would kick up dust and mank. And then using the same brush here, I'm just going to blend that in a bit more. So all we've got really there is just a bit of nice bit of um, dusty residue that's come up off the uh, airfield onto the side of the fuselage. Just the fuselage. I hope you can see that okay. Um, but for me, you know, it's not going to want masses of amounts. It's just again a bit more kind of subtle and. You just just keep putting it, you know, where you where you think it's more likely to have accumulated, and kind of logic would, would dictate that you're going to get plenty around the lower end of the uh, fuselage here, uh, where the thing the aircraft is taxing and during takeoff. I mean, it must have kicked up. I've seen video actually, or film, I should say, of the period where these things have been, or certainly desert aircraft. I think they were mostly P40s. I think from 112 Squadron. Um, that were taken off and they were just kicking up so much stuff it was unbelievable well surprise surprise we want to replicate some of that on the model so there we go that's that's kind of one side I think almost done there and um, I'll do the other side um, and um, yeah that's just a little bit of uh, pastel weathering to the side of the fuselage 